Melbourne. There's people here from the United States of America got here before you. Because I can't believe you people have got on one of the most famous ships in the world when you're doing a trip that other people do on a ferry. And I can't believe we spent a day at sea to get to Tasmania. You've paid to cruise, not drift. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, there was people on the ferry, they lapped us. <laughs> they go, look at that lot. Thousands of dollars they've spent, we spent $80. One way, mate. <laughs> Sorry about the accent. So, uh, but it's good. I am from the UK and we are, we are struggling in the UK at the moment. It's been a real nightmare, hasn't it? Brits with a Brexit, do you agree? It's a nightmare, it really is. It's been that bad the last two years. We're now looking at the Americans and thinking, it's all right. <laughs> Great to be here. What a, what a, I can't believe we are in Hobart for two days. And isn't it great to be able to cram it all in? So, uh, <laughs> I love it that you people have come on a ship for a week and you're not going outside of Australia. So, uh, when you get on this ship that first night, how many, how many people are on this ship for the first time? Right, these are the people I've got to talk to because you must have done this. I did this many years ago. I know a lot of you have been cruising for a long time, but you must have done this at some point. When you get on the ship, you go to your cabin and that first night, your cabin becomes a discotheque. Because you're trying to work out. <laughs> which switch <laughs> turns on which light? You're doing that, the light comes on over there. You do that, the light goes off over there. You do that, that light's still left over there. Nobody knows how to turn that light over the desk off. You're doing on, off, off, on. The lights are going on, off, off, on. On, off, off, on. You get them all off, you get in the bed, you lay back, your head hits the switch, they all come back up. People in Melbourne thought this ship was sending an SOS. And I miss my family when I'm away. I've got a 19-year-old son, he's in hospital right now, he's having his iPhone surgically removed. So... He's just left school, right, just recently. And I said to him, what are you going to do? He's had a great education. I said, what are you going to do? I said, the world's your oyster, son. I said, what are you going to do? He said, I'm taking a gap year. <laughs> I said, oh, what? He said, a gap year. I said, a gap year? What's that? He said, I'm taking some time out. I said, you haven't had any time in. <laughs> he said, I'm just going to bum around. For a year, he said, "Did you not have to do? It? Did you not do a gap year?" I said, "I'm still on it." <laughs> and the downside is the travelling. The travelling is a nightmare. The flying. I don't know if you have you been to the UK recently, sir. Right? When you, we've got some great airports. We've got a very exclusive airport called La Tom, right? And one or two people have been. They probably know it as Luton, right? So you and you. <laughs> Right, Luton Airport, right, it's up at Luton Airport is never closed because even the fog won't go to Luton. <laughs> and I'm there the other week, I was going to join another ship called the Depression of the Seas, and I was. <laughs> nice to come here and see a younger crowd, and I was on the other ship. <laughs> I met this lady, she was a bit older than me, I took her back to my cabin, I said, Hey, your age, and she died. So. <laughs> And this guy comes in. Now, I don't know if it's the same in Australia, but I know it happens in America, and it certainly happens in the UK. But these, uh, these, these youngsters now, they go on these stag weekends, or hen weekends, bachelor or bachelorette weekends, I think it's called in the States, and they dress in fancy dress. Does that happen here? They dress as film stars or film characters. So this guy comes in, I'm going on Ryanair. This guy comes in, and he's about 19, right? And he, he's already had a few drinks, and he's dressed as Superman. <laughs> he goes up to the desk and the woman at the desk on Ryanair looks up, sees this guy dressed as Superman and she said, you can't fly like that. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I know, that's why I've got a ticket. <laughs> You 
have been a wonderful audience, ladies and gentlemen. You really have. Yeah, say, say that I've got a weak finish. Now, I, I've got some shock news for you. You won't believe this. You'll never hear this from another ship comedian. I did say ship. <laughs> You will not believe this. You will never hear this from another comedian on a ship. But I have no CDs and no DVDs for sale. <laughs> I have cassettes. <laughs> Records. <laughs> Videos. VHS, Betamax. <laughs> I mean, just good night.